many of you remember Dagat? Honest question, seriously. Because last time I played Dagat was when I covered her and made a video about her and all her abilities. So if you want to know more on how she works, do go check that out. So the real question is, why don't we play her? Or did people actually forget about her? Because she's not a bad frame. Not at all. She's an amazing frame. It's just that there's not much reason to use her because she was designed as a nuke frame with her fourth ability that can armor strip, but we can do that easily with other abilities. And at the same time, she gives you crit damage with her third ability. It's not that good because once you build up conditional strength increases, you'd either have to die, fall off the map or whatever, just so you can recast the ability. But then it also goes on a cooldown. The one good thing about that ability is that it makes you immortal. And she has a first and second ability that allows you to spread and prime enemies. Pretty nice. So with recent changes to Dante, I logged in just to see what has changed with his line of sight issues. But then right next to Dante, we had the Gyat. So when I looked at both of them, I was like, we got the double D combo. What happens if we put two of these Ds together? So first I thought, what if I take Dagatha's first ability and put onto Dante? So I can have some nice viral priming. Wasn't a good idea. And too many button pressing. Because he already has a lot to do when it comes to nuking. But then I was like, what if I take Dante's D and shove it into Dagat? For those asking, what kind of D did you put into Dagat? Well, Dark Verse, Dante's D. This ability is... is Dante's third ability, and it's his helmet ability. If you have not seen, I did use the same helmet on Neja with his fourth ability augment, and yes, it did do a lot of damage, nuked everything in sight. However, it's a very basic ability because all it does is cut down enemies with slash damage and bleeds them. What makes it so unique on someone like Dagat? Well, it's to do with her word scythe her first ability she activates this has these scythes spin around her similar to yarelli's useless ability but it launches itself towards enemies and primes them with viral while also dealing viral damage it has a synergy with the second ability doom where it allows you to spread that damage and doom also has this stored damage mechanic so let me go show you how it works so looking at the second ability doom it has a 40 degree angle and it reaches pretty far depending on your range when you cast it boom all these enemies are now tagged with this weird cross on their bodies and you just saw how they just took some damage after having some weird sickle above their heads so let's show that again cast it now they have these sickles above their heads and then boom they deal damage now these sickles store damage okay so when you cast this deal damage and then boom you see how it went from 8 damage to 1.6k damage because it stores damage and then deals that damage right back to the enemies. So now when you pair Doom and the first ability, it allows you to spread the first ability and refreshes those sickles damage on Doom, which is very nice. You can use your first ability, second ability and then stack up all that damage onto enemies. Boom, they died, these guys are dying. The only issue is that this has angle problems. So you need to have some range. At the same time, you need to have a clear view of your enemies. So how are we going to fix this issue? Well, with grouping. How are we going to get grouping when we already have a helmet ability for damage? With Nautilus. Nautilus has this very useful tool called Cordon. Cordon pulls in enemies within a 30 meter radius. It has a cooldown of 15 seconds, but that can be reduced thanks to Manifold Bond. And when you pair it up with Assault Mode, it attacks enemies. Attacking enemies will prime them because remember, you need to have three or more stats effects on the enemies for it to reduce the cooldown. But we're also dealing Viral and Slash on the enemies. Okay. There you go. They're all grouped up together. This is a lot more convenient <laughs> just to show you how this looks like. And all these enemies are grouped up together. They're getting hit with all these status effects. All right. Use your Doom. Word Scythe. Use your Dark Verse. And then boom. Look at that. That's juicy damage. And reminder, these are level 225 Steel Path enemies. So let's go show you how this build works in Steel Path. 
path. All right, here we are in Steel Paths just to show you how this build works. It is for people <laughs> who actually know how to move. And yes, it is somewhat of a high APM type of build. You need to know how to dodge roll. You need to know how to move because you're going to be moving, casting abilities, not really staying behind to see enemies die. So when you activate Doom, use your word scythe, apply Dark Verse, and then move on. Do not stay behind. And I'm using the Prados here just for the extra movement, Parker Velocity, as you can see. And notice my shields are quite low. That's thanks to catalyzing shields. So this is an old school shield gating setup. But let's say you do happen to die. Well, no worries. You have your third ability the skill issue button. This does go on a cooldown though, so be sure to always be aware of the timer. I'm using Matterite just for the additional casting speed and power strength, but I will just do as transference for the casting speed. Activate my skill issue button, Doom, Word Scythe, Swing Swing, and move. See how all of those enemies are dead? Everything on the map is deleted. Look at that. And I'm quite liberal with my ability spamming. I haven't even used my tome yet. Let's use the tome. Why not? Free energy region. You're just on the move. This is not the greatest tal set, but you can see our damage spread. Oh, they died. No enemies on the map. Oh, here we go. New enemies. Yeah, just keep on the move. Unfortunately, this ability spam does struggle against Xmas units. Speak of the devil. So just use your melee, heavy attack, and move on. Same thing when it comes to Acolytes. You're not going to be one-shotting Acolytes. However, the melee is going to be quite useful in that situation. I do not like this tile set. But we're going to have to make do. All right, Eximus. Heavy attack it, move on. Oh, this is much better. Oh, they just died. Or oh, we got procced with heat there. Let me get rid of that guy. Because remember, with Doom and any type of damage that the Goth deals will kill enemies. He's got Doom. That's an easy one shot. And plus, you have all that crit damage increase from the third ability. So your heavy attacks or any attack that has a lot of crit will deal a lot of damage. Don't stick around. These guys have Doom. Cast your Word Scythe. Swing away. Move on. All right, there's Neximus there. Just heavy attack it. And move on. Let's cast our Tome. Get some of that energy regen. Move up. And killing Eximus, of course, gives you health and energy. So, be sure to get rid of them pretty quickly. And plus, you don't want an Electric Eximus or a Blitz Eximus. Those things hurt. Alright, here comes an Acolyte. Who is it? Heavy attack it. Move on. As you can see, very easy. Woo! Eximus, dodge roll. We did get skill issued there because of all that crazy effects on from the Eximus. But no worries. We're going to be back in action and activate the third again. Now we have our skill issue button back. So let's go back to the orbiter and show you how all of this is put together. I'm stuck. Okay, back in the orbiter just to see how all of this is put together. Of course, the first thing you want to see is the Archon shards. I have two yellows here. Unfortunately, not Townforge. But if you do get them Townforge, please get them Townforge because having more casting speed is so much better. Way, way better. Now for the blues, we got energy. And for those swimming in Townforge and want to invest into equilibrium shards, those are the purple shards, and turn these into equilibrium shards, you can do that. And that means you can run Prime Flow on the build. But I did not have Prime Flow on the build, hence why I'm using these. Now, three purple Tau Forge shards will give you a hundred and... 12.5, which is slightly more. When I say slightly, it's a 2.5 increase. 
to the original 110 increase. So yeah, that's that's up to you if you want to if you want to do equilibrium on the build or waste your shards for equilibrium shards. To be honest, I would rather use those purple shards on someone that can use them better as in crit damage increase. Cora, Colervo, you know what I'm saying. Now that we're on this side, you get to see what's happening for the build section. First and foremost, I'm gonna put in the Arcanes. So after 250 kills, boom, 60% strength with Molt Augmented. And for some, you know, energy management, I do have Steadfast. So this Arcane has a chance of giving me three casts for free. Pretty nice. I didn't see the point of running Energize because of her passive, which is kind of like Arcane Pulse and Energize together. It's Pulse, right? The, the health one? I don't know. I haven't used it in God knows how long. Now, in the Aura, a long forgotten mod ever since the shield gating changes, but we're using it for this particular build because if you read this, converts energy spent into shields. Now, if you have negative efficiency, you get more shields because you're spending more energy. However, it's not a negative efficiency build. I'm pairing this aura, brief respite, with catalyzing shields. This reduces my shields from 250 down to 50. So this kind of brings back the old school shield gating setup where you'd run a decaying dragon key. You'd, you know that for those who don't know, don't worry about it. It was, it was, a, it was a bad time. This is better. So with this combo, we have low shields and quick shield gates and we get to refresh our shields fairly quickly because we don't have that much. In the Exilus, best mod in the game. You know what it is. If you don't have this, you can use something like Handspring and use the regular version of Footed and use a Fortitude mod, but that's two extra mod slots that you don't need. Now to add on to the defenses, I'm running Rolling Guard because we have low shields, we wanna have our iframes and we're gonna be moving, dodge rolling, cleansing ourselves of status effects. So this combo is what we need. We have our defenses, we have some strength, we have a little bit of energy management. Let's add on to that strength. Starting off with Transient Fortitude. This drops our duration down to 73%, but we also get 55% bonus strength. We're not gonna be putting any duration mods on this build. With this negative duration, we still have 10 seconds on Doom, which is more than enough, and three seconds on the slow. The slow isn't going to be that necessary or that impressive, but it's going to give you a little bit of survivability. Cause let's be honest, the main thing I'm using Word Scythe for is for the viral priming, pairing Doom and Word Scythe to spread the viral and that damage redirection from Doom. That's what we need. And since the viral proc is a status effect, it's going to scale off status duration, which is a separate thing, not tied to your duration. You're, this is not Lavos. And to add on to that strength, I'll be using Precision Intensify. This is going to give me 90% strength on Dark Verse. As you can see right there, it's a 3000 damage increase. That's important. So the other strength multiplier for Doom is coming from Molt Augmented, Transient Fortitude, and if you want to use the Matterai Sling Strength. And Equilibrium, this converts health into energy and energy into health when you pick up the orbs. Now, our range increase is going to be Stretch and Augur Reach. This is an Augur mod, which adds on to the energy spent, converts into shields really good with brief respite and to add on to that with a little bit of strength and part of the auger set bonus i have auger secrets so this combo gives me a decent amount of strength and the appropriate amount of shield conversion so whatever ability that you do you're going to get some shields back for movement utility and killing Xmas and acolytes that's that's quite a lot i'm using the other half aka Pratus. You want to use the sprint speed and slide increase evolution. You want that parkour velocity evolution. This this one initial combo, pretty nice, I guess. And the heavy attack wind up speed, just making things way faster when you swing swing at enemies. The build is still the same from the other videos. I have exposure for the corrosive increase, very nice against acolytes. And it's a Tomfa, so it's a force bleed prox. And since we have exposure and rat on with some bleeds, Pretty nice against Xmas. And when you heavy attack, you get Dispatch Overdrive. So that's a movement speed multiplier. So this way you get boom, a boosted speed with that sprint speed, Parker velocity, you have the survivability and you're slowing down enemies with the first ability. And our utility weapon, the Favonius Codex. You want Zata's Invocation and Hara Canticle for the energy region and 
when you use your alternate fire, prime enemies with the alternate fire, kill them with abilities, they drop universal orbs. And for the primary, use whatever primary you want. All I did was slap on a Magum Serration. This is all you need. You want that additional sprint speed. You want to be agile. That's going to be a part of your survivability. Otherwise, this is the new nuking Dagash, where we put Dante's D into Dagath. God, that is so cringe. I don't know. But yeah, this, 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 this is the new thing. Yeah, do a lot of damage. And please, make sure to be on the move. For those who say, I can't survive, you're not moving. Anyway, folks, that has been it for me. I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe. For more Warframe content, streams, and so much more, do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, a peace. Bye-bye now.